Hey, welcome to T-Minus 7. I'm Jim. He's John. Hi. Today we're going to talk about the 21 days of prayer and fasting we're doing, and we're going to specifically talk about one of the daily devos from this uh, 21 days. We have uh, 21 days of daily devotions that are on where, John? How do people find that? Uh, on the website, if you're right on the homepage towards the top, it'll see that uh, 21 uh, days of daily or, or uh, prayer and fasting, and beneath that a button says devos. Uh, or if you want to type it in like some kind of robot, it would be <laughs> evergreenpnw.com slash 21 days. And it's also on Instagram. It'll be on Facebook. Yeah. It's, so you yeah. can just find it there through the phone app to the website. And it, every single morning there's a new one uh, to help you kind of go through your 21 days. Yeah. yeah. And they post at 6 in the morning. So if you're an mm -hmm. early riser, they're good for you at 6 a.m. Uh, every day. Mm -hmm. This one is from Wednesday, January 6th. Um, and, it, and it's Matthew 16... Uh, or chapter 6, verse 16 to 18. And he says, When you fast, don't look somber as hypocrites who, who uh, disfigure their faces to show their fasting. Basically, letting people see. And then it finishes this way. Um, uh, you don't want it to be obvious that you're fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. Mm -hmm. This is the part I like. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And so I had this thought, Jonathan, that one of the things, it's kind of a tension point for us because as a whole church, we're talking about fasting. What are you doing for the fast? And sure. what are you going to do for the fast? And um, it's kind of an odd thing because really God says, when you fast, I want this just to be between you and me. Yeah. And don't talk about it. Sure. <laughs> and yet I find it encouraging to talk about it because people can explore that. Um, why do you think that God says, don't tell anybody, just do this you and me? Yeah, it, it seems like uh, he wants to eliminate all of the uh, other reasons you would do something like this. Yeah, so, something like to, to look more spiritual. Yeah, look more spiritual. Or to be impressive to somebody. I think it's the same reason why it's hard to fast food with not hoping you'll lose weight. That's kind of its own little nugget there. I'm guilty as charged. I, yeah. You know, I, I have been getting on the scale <laughs> during the 21 days, and I wasn't getting on the scale before then. Well, the, and the truth is, it, it's, it would help in both ways. Yeah, but I think it is a nice side effect, but that shouldn't be the motivator. Exactly. Yeah, and... And what he says is, here's the, here's the power thing. Your father who sees what you do secretly mm -hmm. will reward you. And one version says, will reward you openly. Oh, okay. So, so what's done in secret will be rewarded. Yes. Yeah, so don't tell anybody what you're doing. That way it is just between you and God. Yeah. One of the things I talk about in that devotion for Wednesday the 6th is that um, God's going to do some things for you. I think mm -hmm. God's going to whisper in your heart. I think things are going to jump out of the scriptures as you read the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, because when you attend to the presence of God, some good things can happen inside you. And don't jump up and start shouting from the housetops everything that God does in your life. Because some of that, I really think God wants to be sacred between him and you. Sure. And it deepens that relationship. Because that's the one we really want to deepen. Yeah. Is, uh, hey, God, remember that time, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, and keep that private. And I was curious, we talked a little bit about this in our last uh, fasting conversation, but with corporate fasting in particular, how do you, you know, uh, uh, keep that in a secret place? Because it says spe specifically, don't go, woe is me. Uh, I'm so right. tired because I haven't been eating right. this food that I, or I haven't been drinking coffee. Or, yeah. How do you do that kind of uh, privacy in a corporate fast like this one? Yeah, I mean, if, if somebody invites you out to dinner and mm -hmm. you're fasting and you want to go, mm -hmm. or you're not on sugar, let's say let's say you gave up sugar, and they go, hey, you want dessert? And you don't need to go, no, I'm fasting sugar. <laughs> sure. You can just go, no, thanks, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Or if they say, how come you're drinking water? Or why don't you eat a meal? Um, you can say, I'm just taking a break from food for a while or something. Uh, you don't want to lie, but mm -hmm. you don't have to tell the whole story. And I think that maybe what this protects us from is any sense of spiritual pride, any sense of comparison. And, and, it, and what I do love about it is it takes that to the Father, where you say, God, I'm doing this because I really want to know you. Mm -hmm. I want something personal from you. I want something that's significant in my relationship with you. And I think, uh, just like you, with your, with your, if you're a married person, there's conversations you have with your married, with your spouse, you should never tell anybody about. Sure. And I think this would be something God's wanting to do in us. So my encouragement is, 
if you, if you say, God, I want some private time with you and me, and I don't want to tell anybody about this. I want to enjoy this. You might enter into another layer of experience with God that you just might not have had otherwise. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So again, uh, jump into the Daily Devos and uh, check those out. They're not very long, and they've got several reflection questions at the end, give you a chance to reflect. I also want to encourage you to journal. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you a journaler during this time, John? You taking notes? No, nah, making me confess this in front of everybody. It's, yeah. it's uh, you said over and over again, it's one of your, uh, how would you put it, the most, uh, it bears lots of fruit in your it life. It does. It's yeah. one of the greatest personal habits I've ever had. And it's, and it's an inconsistent habit for me. And that's why I'd say it's, it's a hard one to be consistent with because it's so, it's like daunting to me. Yeah. That's why this idea of the, the one line journal we were talking about. Oh, yeah. There's a, an idea where you can journal one line a day for every single day. And that's way more appealing to me because you can... And that's a pretty good deal. Like at the end of your day, come up with one line that defines or describes the day. Hmm. It's not a bad idea. I had the idea of come up with a haiku for every day. <laughs> there you go. Get creative. Yeah. And uh, the thing Rick Warren always says, uh, thoughts disentangle themselves as they pass through your lips or through your fingertips. Hmm. And so talking it out, um, forcing yourself, this is again with prayer with God, talking, telling God, tell God, articulate. Uh, what you want, how you feel, what you want from him, those thoughts disentangle themselves and it becomes a really powerful part of the journey. Awesome. So I hope you're uh, diving in. And listen, if you haven't jumped into the fast, it's never too late. You might say, yeah, but it's day seven, day nine, whatever day it is. Who cares? Jump in and uh, carve out some space, give some focus, get alone with the Father and know this, the, the Father, when He sees what you do in secret, He will reward you, and He'll reward you openly. I think that's a pretty motivating thing. Beautiful. All right. Thanks for joining us. Hey, click the subscribe button. Mm -hmm. Click the little bell. That'll give you notifications when new video drops, new videos drop. And uh, man, we're really grateful. John, thank you. Have a great day.